Hey, it's Matt with McGee Farms and uh, haven't been able to get a lot of videos out here recently. I've been traveling a lot for work, plus uh, a lot of breakdowns on equipment and I just kind of had to put the camera up and uh, get things fixed so I can run the farm. And also it's been about 100, 105 heat index uh, every day and up until two days ago, we hadn't seen rain in about a month. So it was just miserable, high humidity. If you go out and work for about 20 minutes, 15 minutes, then you gotta go in and cool off. It's just summer in Missouri, but uh, it's gonna give another update on the garden. Gonna try to knock out a couple videos today and get them edited over the next week, being 4th of July uh, next Tuesday. Got a little bit of time off, but wanted to uh, give an update on the garden and also some of the, uh, we've added a little more and I've got plans to add more to it uh, once we get done with this season and going into the fall. Uh, also, you see, I got a couple trees here ready to plant. I've got an apple tree, a mulberry, another apple tree. I'm kind of waiting till the fall because we're planting them out on the farm a little bit and I'm wanting them to get a little bit of a, uh, uh, the roots of winter start where if it's harder to get out there and, and water them where they're at, at least, uh, you know, they get a little bit of, of a start because I try to water everything twice a day. But uh, right here, we've got our strawberry blackberry patch and we've got some honeyberries in there. Blackberries are starting to take off. We've got some forming on there. Strawberries are really spreading around. I try to come out here and weed about every couple of days and uh, and get everything out. But one thing I did with the garden, and uh, I definitely suggest this because it's really worked good, is with chickens, we've got a bunch of uh, pine shavings. You get those big bales of them, and you usually got half a bale left at the end of the year because we don't go through that many of them. So they just sit there. I never know what to do with them. I hate to throw them away. So I started putting them around as mulch in here, also with the pumpkins, the watermelons, and uh, since I did that, I mean, the strawberries, uh, everything has just, it just like tripled in size over like two or three days. I mean, it really, really took off. So, uh, you know, that stuff's cheap. A bag of that stuff's maybe, I don't know, five, six bucks. Uh, I haven't, haven't bought it in a while because I've had so much extra left over from previous years. And then People give us chickens all the time, and when they do, they give us a thing of it. So, so yeah, finally finding a, a good use for it. But it, it helps keep the water in and really helps this stuff uh, flourish. I did the arches, and I did do a video on uh, where I built the arches at, or when, after I got done building them. Got our tomatoes over here. They're uh, going really wild. I'm... Sorry, I wasn't uh, pinching some of the uh, some of the runners off while it was going, but I had no idea. I've never had tomatoes go this crazy before. So next year, and the other thing is, I'm just going to do one row instead of a double row of tomatoes and peppers, just because it's grown so well. When I built these raised beds, I went in the horse stall, and we've got uh, dried manure that's about like compost. And so I lined the bottom third with that. I went and got some good black dirt from around the farm with the tractor. And then the top third is topsoil that I went and bought from a landscape supply. And it's, it's done really good. We've got cantaloupe and watermelon growing here. It's going up the uh, trellis. This side's doing a little better with it, growing a little more. Uh, I've got some green beans right there as well. I put green beans on the end here, and they're just about starting to put out beans. You see all kinds of blossoms on them. And uh, the pumpkin, we put one pumpkin just to kind of try to see how it would be. It's a smaller pumpkin. And uh, not too bad. We've got one. There you go, you can kind of see it, it's growing, it's kind of low. Hopefully I'm not gonna to have to support it, but uh, with watermelons and pumpkins, sometimes if they do get too big, 
Uh, you just kind of get some uh, pantyhose and tie them up to the trellis and it kind of helps support them to let them grow. You know, tomatoes, we've got a ton of tomatoes just waiting for them to turn ripe and peppers. You know, one thing, I bought the cheap box store Walmart uh, landscape cover to put down to keep weeds out. And it's been down since April. It's the you know first of July and it's already tearing. I think next year I've got, uh, uh, or this fall, I'm gonna expand on this quite a bit and I'm gonna get some really good stuff off of Amazon that I've been looking at. Got our peas over here. We've been getting a lot of peas which uh, I just like eating fresh peas out of the garden. And uh, these sweet peas are, are really good. I've got a little bit of some green beans growing here too. And uh, they're just kind of taking off. We've got squash and cucumbers in this big bush here. And again, this is one that we didn't get trained in time on the trellis, so it's kind of everywhere. But uh, we've gotten a lot of squash off of it, a couple cucumbers. Strawberries we're getting about five, six strawberries a day between these two beds. And uh, really, really happy with that because uh, in the past when I've done strawberries the first year, you don't get that many and what you get don't taste good. It's about the second, third year before they really get the flavor. And these have, have had the flavor. And it's the same with the raspberries. We've got Joan Jay raspberries. You can see a few of them starting to grow here. And uh, Joan Jay definitely if you're planting raspberries, they, I've had them in the past, they're great. Once they're established, second, third year, you're gonna have raspberries about the middle to end of April coming on, and they'll continuously put out raspberries until October. And they're super sweet, they're better than anything you're gonna, you're gonna find at the grocery store. Uh, definitely, definitely will recommend those. So as I expanded out our arch a little bit, I put a second one in and was trying to kind of figure out, you know, how I was gonna, how I was gonna do it. I didn't want to plant stuff in the ground because uh, our ground is not the greatest. This used to be a crop field, so it's really compacted and it's a lot of clay. So I took some two by eights and I just basically made a little rectangle frame. I think I went out about two foot and. Uh, see a little better here because this one hasn't been here as long as the other but a uh, little rectangle frame got some good dirt from down on the farm some of the dried manure out of the horse pasture and uh, put them on the side I've got cantaloupe and I think I put some acorn squash in this to climb this has only been here maybe about a week or two and then on the back side of it I got uh, sunflowers growing on this side, this one is a little bit, been there a little bit more, and it's actually, I'm seeing it starting to put out uh, some cantaloupe. This is all cantaloupe here, other than the sunflowers on the other side. And uh, they've, they've really flourished as well, but, you know, with these little boxes, you got some good dirt in there, uh, it's, it's gone great. Come on the back side here, we've got some corn, and then of course, you know, the cucumbers and the peas. So here's my plans on going forward here. Once we get through this season and into the fall where I've got the winter to kind of work it, I'm gonna make several more of these three by eight foot beds like we've got here. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put them on the end of where these trellises are, go out about eight foot and then on the, uh, where they're at, I'll probably end up putting another uh, another of these arches because these arches seem to work really good it's just I don't have enough space the way everything's growing but uh, that'll pretty much take us about out to our gate where we go in and out of the pasture uh, the other thing I'm thinking about doing because I want to leave space where I can get in to pick the vegetables so I don't want to put them you know around everywhere but I'm thinking about coming on this side and uh, putting some of them here having them go across to the fence and I've got the T-post there. So the T-post will kind of brace them. All you need is one T-post for them. And kind of do it on this side as well. Plus uh, when I get the other two, uh, the other two 
raised bed planter boxes or raised bed gardens set up here. I'll, you know, I'll put some on the end as well. So that's going to give me quite a bit more and will really let me expand this garden out. The other thing I like is uh, training this stuff. You can get it up so you can get around here with a weed eater and uh, keep it looking kind of clean. When you're training them, you pull those vines up and you kind of keep them on there. If they're going to be stu stubborn, uh, get you some twine. This stuff just breaks down with time. So as they get bigger, it doesn't uh, restrict them. And it'll eventually just disintegrate. I use those with uh, fruit trees a lot when they're younger and we get a lot of fruit on one branch and it's kind of hanging down. I'll put a T-post in and kind of brace them with that as well. So that's pretty much where we're at. Oh, the other thing, you know, I talked about doing uh, some heavier landscape. And what I'm going to do this winter as well is I've got some heavy duty lands, uh, landscape cover that I'm looking at. Uh, it's, it's the professional grade stuff. And we're going to put it in the middle here, take out all this grass, and then put some, uh, some rounded stones, uh, some river rock, kind of in there, make a little place to where, I don't know, I thought about maybe putting a little table and chairs or a gazebo out here with it as well. Maybe we're going to build a new peacock enclosure and uh, might kind of have it incorporated with it as well with, you know, an area that we're at. I, I don't know. We're still kind of looking at plans, working it out. I've got a couple engineers that help me uh, when I get an idea, put it on paper. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're kind of talking, talking what we're going to do.